Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I've been a professional family systems therapist for 32 years, and I've been on the planet for 74 years. As I have listened to hundreds and hundreds of people, both clients and friends and family members, describe their problems, a couple of patterns have become evident for me, and I want to pass them on to you in case you fit the pattern. Um, I've noticed that people who have trouble filling their needs, in other words, people who have problems, we all do, uh, you do too at times, people who have chronic trouble filling their needs or solving their problems often have a couple of characteristics. <clears throat> One of the most um, blatant is, in my judgment, many of us, I include myself, are survivors of significant early childhood trauma, parental abuse, abandonment, and neglect. Those hurt and they um, unintentionally create psychological wounds. That's one trait of people who have significant trouble solving or avoiding life problems. Another trait that is the focus of this video is their language. What I notice about people who have chronic trouble solving their problems or avoiding problems is the way they think and speak. Uh, one typical trait is uh, they use negative or toxic phrases and words like, oh, I can't beat my depression. I can't find a healthy way to relate to people. I just can't find a way to sleep well. I just can't. I can't, I can't. Um, re they um, persuade themselves by such speech that nothing's going to work, things are hopeless, and they're stuck. Usually, people who use language like this, glass half empty language, are not even aware they are doing it. Um, they uh, also repeat statements chronically and with great energy about how bad they feel. Oh, I'm miserable. Oh, I felt that this past week has been terrible. Uh, I just have been in the dumps so long, blah, blah, blah. That's true. What they don't realize is that by repeating this over and over and over, it's likely to keep them stuck. Uh, the big problem here is People are not aware of how of the words they think and speak. So one of the points of this video is I invite you, in case you have significant life problems that you're having trouble solving, start to become aware of the words in your head and that come out of your mouth. Watch for a self-defeating, toxic pattern of words and phrases. One popular one, especially for people who seek help, okay, um, which is what people who come to a therapist do, please help me solve my problem, because I can't. I can't. And they mean that. Uh, something I've seen often, not always, among greatly frustrated people in great pain, if I make a suggestion about something that might realistically help them, in various ways, um, they have part of their personality that pops up and says, well, yeah, but that won't work because the theme generally is called yes, but. You may have experienced this yourself when you've tried to help someone you care about. Well, look, have you ever thought you might do so-and-so? And they say, oh, well, I can't do that because, notice, I can't. I've never been able to. That won't work because those negative statements and phrases are heard by your inner children. These are normal parts of everyone's personality, not just an inner child, inner children. There's a group of them. They're very naive. They listen intently to what you think and what you speak, and they treat it as the truth. So when you say, or when someone in you causes you to say, I can't, I'll never, 
things will never get better. I just have no hope. When you say things like that, your inner kids are listening and they absorb that as though it is the truth. That will paralyze any chance you have for making positive changes. Because they will always pop up then, if you try something new, and say, that won't work. Well, we've tried that before. See, that never worked. Or people laughed at us. Or um, this is ridiculous. It's that's dumb. It's a dumb idea. It's bad. It's impractical. It won't work. If you train your inner kids to believe that, they will come back and um, shape your thoughts and your behaviors and your actions and limit realistic problem solutions. Most people are unaware this is happening. So, as you, I hope, see where I'm going with this, if you have chronic significant problems you're having trouble solving, a. Check to see if you are a survivor of childhood trauma, parental abandonment, abuse, and neglect. Use online lesson one and the related videos here on YouTube to see if you may be a, quote, grown, wounded child. If you are, commit to trying to reduce your wounds over time. You can. I've seen over 100 people do this men, women of all ages, you can reduce your wounds once you become aware of them and acknowledge them. As you do that, a second powerful thing you can do is commit. I am going to become aware of the words that I think and speak relative to my problems, relative to me as a person. For example, if you find yourself saying, oh, I'm just a loser. Uh, convert that to, I'm wounded and I'm learning to heal my wounds. Notice how different that sounds. Once you become aware of toxic or negative thoughts and phrases, spoken phrases and words, what you can do is intentionally shift them to something realistic. Here's a global example. I have worked with many people who, if I suggest something that might help, they say uh, in a variety of ways, I can't. And my response is, what would it feel like if you said, instead of I can't, say, I'm learning how to blah, blah. Oh, I can't remember names. I'm learning how to remember names. I haven't got it yet, but I'm going to get there. Notice how different that feels. The inner kids will have hope instead of despair. Can you see it? Imagine this group of kids listening avidly to every word you think and speak. The reason, in my judgment, that many people are stuck in toxic language patterns is a group of very diligent, well-intentioned personality subcells, particularly the cynic, whose job it is to see the worst in everything, the cynic works with the pessimist, who does pretty much the same thing. Sometimes they work together, sometimes they're separate. But the pessimist says, oh, things are terrible, things are bad, they'll never get better, I can't, I won't, uh, nothing will help, you can't help, uh, God won't help, blah, blah, blah. The cynic, and the pessimist, and the worrier, but what if it doesn't work, uh, and various variations of that. Those three guardians and several others frequently sabotage your thinking and your speech. That's all they know how to do. They're, strangely enough, they're trying to help. They don't know any other way to help. So what? What can you do? Acknowledge that you have active personality stem cells like these. Don't shame yourself. You're normal. They come from childhood trauma. Use inner family therapy to convert the attitudes of subcells like these. Teach them different ways of helping you. One such different way is to convince them they're actually causing you problems by the speech they're using and ask them and negotiate with them to change their speech. Instead of saying, I can't, uh, get them to say, 
Well, we're learning to, or we have, we're on the way towards, we're getting better at, notice the flavor of words like that. You can't do these words if you're not actually trying to recover. If you just intellectually say, I'm going to change the words, that probably won't have much effect. You have to actually be speaking your truth, which is, I am committed to healing my wounds and reducing my problems and learning how to manage them and how to, tr how to free my true self. I really am learning and I'm working at it and I'm committed. If you really are, then changing your thoughts and speech to from I can't, it'll never, I won't, to I am learning, I can, I will get better. I will stop having emotional outbursts that scare and uh, bother people. I will. I'm learning how. I haven't got it yet, but I'm on the way. That is the point of this video. Become aware of your thoughts and your speech. If you are a wounded survivor of early childhood trauma, as a very high majority of people are, you will probably, without knowing it, be using self-defeating, toxic words and phrases in your thoughts and in your speech. Once you notice this, using the skill of awareness, you can intentionally make part of your recovery, your healing your wounds, changing your language from negative, toxic phrases to real statements that reflect what you are about right now. I am working to get better. I'm working to improve. I am getting better. I can, etc., etc. Notice your reaction to what I'm proposing here. All I'm saying is become aware of your words and consider changing them towards glass half full. Uh, help train your subselves to see that that's really beneficial. A spin-off of this is begin to notice in people you care about, notice their speech patterns. If there's someone you care about who is having real trouble with life problems, alert them to this video and or the point of this video. Help them become aware of their language and some alternatives. Okay? I hope you found this thought-provoking and perhaps reason for positive change. Thanks for watching.